Welcome to the last part of the inverted pendulum uh, tutorial. And the main topic of uh, this video is um, linear quadratic regulator, LQR. Uh, and uh, we will implement LQR within the STEM32 microcontroller to uh, balance our inverted pendulum system. So we will use LQR to keep the inverted pendulum upward. Also, I want to mention that we already covered the stepper motor control and using a rotary encoder to measure an, measure an angle. So if you need a refresher, of course, you can refer to those videos. Another important thing is that um, there's a PDF document which clearly explains um, the control system uh, topics and um, and the system modeling so i will not um, spend too much time on explaining control system topics rather instead we will focus more on implementing the lqr control system techniques uh, within the microcontroller so we will mostly cover the practical side uh, of the control systems so um, a few words about the state-space design and LQR. Um, usually, when we deal with uh, complex systems, for example, if you're uh, designing some robot, the, there are several things we want to control. There are several variables we want to control. For example, in our case, we want to control the angle, uh, the, the rotary angle, and also we want to control the stepper motor position. So there, there are two things we want to control. Um, but if we we use um, but if we use a classical control system approach, for example, if we use just a PID, we can control only one single variable. But of course, we can like combine different PIDs. But in principle, we have only one variable uh, that we can control. But instead, we can use a state space design where we can um, design a controller which is capable to control several variables. So to do that, first we have to model the system. So by modeling, I mean, first we need to uh, define the state variables. So in our case, we have this x vector. So x is not just a single variable, but it's a set of variables we want to uh, control, we want to deal with. So for example, in our case, we have an angle, we have an angular velocity, we have the step motor position, and then we have step motor velocity. So we end up with, with four state variables. Once you define them, we need to, we need to uh, model the system, which is defining this equation. So here, u is an input to the system, x is the state variables, and x dot means the derivative basically the dynamics of the system. So here we have A and B. And A and B are matrices. And usually when we deal with a, a linear time invariant systems, A and B are constant uh, matrices. So they hold only constant values. And the, the second equation is about measuring. So usually we have sensors, and and sometimes we don't measure the, the all state variables, maybe some of them, but we can reconstruct all the state variables using the, the sensor values. So to define that part, the estimation part, we have the we have the second equation. But right now we don't care much about the second very uh, the second equation because we are going to measure all the state variables. Once we define uh, our system we can um, uh, design our controller to uh, provide the right um, input to the system to keep all uh, the state variables around the reference point. So by designing the controller, we need to come up with some gains, which allows us to provide the right feedback to the system. So for example, we have four state variables. So we need to come up with four gains, gains uh, by games, I mean just the constant values, we will just multiply 
uh, we each state variable with the corresponding gain, we take the sum and we provide it as an input to the system. So it's a kind of similar to PID, but instead of having just a PID gains, we have a multiple gains to incorporate all, all the state variables. So how to find the right gains? Of course, the, the multiple ways, multiple techniques to do that, but one of the most popular ones is, is a linear quadratic regulator. So in the linear quadratic regulator, first we have a cost function. So we have a state variables, we multiply by this Q, Q matrix, then we have a R matrix for the input, and from that we have the cost function, and when we design LQR, it will minimize this constant function, uh, this, this cost function, sorry. Uh, so what, what it means, if we want to have an aggressive control, we want to, if we want to keep, uh, if we want to keep an error as small as possible, we just set higher Q, Q, uh, higher values to Q, Q matrix. So, so we get a um, higher cost function um, uh, with respect to the state variables. But if we have some limitation in terms of control, in terms of the input, for example, you have a limited acceleration or you have, you have limited power, your, your motor can deliver to the system, then we need to consider that part. So in that case, we set just a high R, uh, high values for the R matrix. So, so this way we will minimize uh, the, the um, minimize um, the input to the system. So okay, so so the point is that we will try different different values for Q and R and we'll find the right cost function. Once we do it, there's a, just a one line in, in MATLAB to get the, the gains we want. So we have A, B matrices, we just Q, R, then it will provide the gains. So once we get this gain, we can start implementing the LQR within the microcontroller. So if we refer to the document I mentioned, uh, they use exactly the same idea. So here we have the state vector X. So we have the angular position of the, of the pendulum. We have the velocity, which, is, which means how fast the, the pendulum is moving. Theta is the stepper motor position. And theta dust is the uh, stepper motor velocity. So we have this four variables, then they define this um, um, equation. For that, they have to use some physics, usually Newton's laws to, to get the dynamics. Uh, from that, uh, they find this A and B matrix. And U here input to the system is the acceleration, the stepper motor acceleration. And this part, we don't care much right now. Then they define this cost function. So they have Q and R matrices. And, and finally, they, I'm pretty sure, I'm 90, 90% sure that they used MATLAB. So finally, they, they got these against uh, for, for the LQR. And I think uh, it will be really good practice if you can try if you try yourself so you can take the these values and you can use MATLAB to to get these gains. So once we get it, we can completely forget about the the system modeling, the control system techniques, and we can jump to the to writing our code to implement the LQR. So that's what we are going to do next. After covering some theory, finally we can dive into the source code of the inverted pendulum project. So the first thing to, to note is, is that when when dealing with, with control systems, we always have to run some tasks, some code periodically. And, and to implement that, we usually use timer update interrupts in, in, when using the microcontrollers. So, so in my case, I'm using timer four to generate the timer update interrupt. So, so here I, I set the, the prescaler and the period to, to the, these values to achieve 
200 hertz uh, control um, a control loop frequency uh, and also i want to mention that if you want to know more about these parameters about the timer update interrupts of course you can uh, you can refer to the videos on my channel and also the most importantly if you if you want to get more deep and knowledge about stem 32 programming i would highly recommend you um stem 32 programming course on my on my website which which covers all the essential topics of the stem 32 programming and and the recent big update is that nowadays i provide 30 percent discount to to students to to all of my all of my courses okay so um let's move on so as i said i'm, I'm using timer 4 to generate the interrupt um so at 200 hertz rate i have this callback function which is executed uh, automatically and i set the timer flag here within within this callback function and when this flag is set i run the pendulum so what it means is that I run this function at, at 200 hertz. And let's see what I'm doing here inside of this function. So inside of this uh, function, I have a state vector machine. So by default, I'm in idle uh, state. And when I, when I want to run the, the, the inverted pendulum, I switch to this uh, start a pendulum case so here what, what i do i just set some velocity to the stepper motor then i wait some time and then i switch to this um, condition this gate wait the angle so what i what i'm uh, trying to do here is that uh, is that I, I i'm trying to excite the prime excite the system because um, by default it is in this condition in this position but i want to reach the upright position so to do that i just uh, provide some initial velocity it will swing uh, just a little bit then every time when it crosses the zero angle i uh, provide a additional velocity to excite uh, the the system more so it will accumulate the energy in every iteration so initially uh, so eventually it will swing back and forth and it will reach the upright position so to achieve that i have this weight zero angle uh, case uh, so this is necessary to uh, excite uh, the the system and then when i re reach the top the upright position i will be inside of this condition so when, when i reach the top the upright position i switch to this uh, condition, this case, switch control. So what I'm doing here is that um, um, is that uh, we have, as I said, LQR. So let me show the coefficients. Uh, I have the, the falling gains for the LQR, uh, which uh, very very similar gains um, compared to the ones we we saw within the within the documentation. So I'm using pretty similar values. So here what I do, first I need to find the angular position, but we of course need some reference. So the reference is that we, need, we want to reach the upright position, which is pi over two. So that's why I have to take the difference. Um, but another thing to note is that uh, when I reach the top, it, uh, the, the angle will be pi over two, but if we go further, it becomes minus pi over two. So to differentiate these two cases, I have these if else conditions. But other than that, uh, next thing, I take the angle speed, um, then I multiply by the second game. But here, when I compute the angular speed, angular velocity, let's say, I just uh, take the difference between two consecutive angle values, but to get the true uh, velocity, we have to divide by the time. So that's why I'm multiplying here by the frequency. And and here I'm, I'm not, I don't have any reference because the reference is basically zero. We want to achieve zero velocity. We want to just uh, keep the pendulum upright with zero velocity. That's why I have a, 
zero velocity here. Uh, then I multiply by this gain. Then I have this the next one, which is the stepper motor position, and we can set some reference point here. So meaning that we can just move the um, the whole inverted pendulum system. And also the last thing is that we have the velocity of the stepper motor, and I divide I multiply it by the first gain we set here. So next thing we take the sum which is within the LQR out. So the LQR out is the is the input to to our system. Um, but as I said, we set the acceleration. So that's why I take the LQR out and I um, uh, subtract from the speed command. So this is the acceleration. We need to um, convert it to the speed difference, the velocity difference, meaning that we need to multiply by the time, which is uh, reverse proportional to the frequency. So that's why I'm dividing by the frequency. Then I set the velocity. So, um, so that's it. It's not uh, complicated at all. Uh, the most important thing is that you just need to um, set the right gains, but um, developing the, the source code itself I think it's not so complicated. So that's it for today. I uh, just want to mention that the source code of this project and, the, and the, of, all, of all other projects I worked so far um, are available on, on the GitHub, GitHub Step School organization. And you can get access to all these repositories by becoming um, a member to, uh, to my uh, Patreon community. So you can find all the useful links in the description below. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to uh, not to miss uh, new videos. So thanks a lot for watching and hopefully see you soon.